In this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate the Emerging Toolpaths feature of the software. This will allow any toolpaths using the same tool to be combined and optimised in a number of different ways into one efficient toolpath, which then can be run on your machine. You can choose to create a toolpath which will find the quickest route to shave off time spent machining. You can also choose to merge toolpaths in such a way as to complete all the toolpaths on a bipart basis and then choose an order in which to cut out to suit so you could begin the finishing stage of each part much sooner without having to wait for all the toolpaths to be executed. So let's take you through the steps. First of all, let's open a new copy of the software. And for this example, we're going to be opening an existing file. So just navigate to the projects folder and select the widget-vector.crv and click open. Now this is a design that may be familiar to those who have watched a few tutorials now. This is just a modified version of our Vectric widget. So let's go over to the toolpaths tab and let's take a look at the toolpaths that we've got for our design. And you can see we've got three toolpaths, pocket rectangles, drill holes and a profile cutout. So let's just preview these just to give us an idea of what we're working with. So let's just pocket out the rectangles and then let's do the drill holes and then let's preview the cutout and you can see that the cutout has got tabs to keep our part in place uh, when we're cutting it out. Now to demonstrate the merging toolpaths feature I'm going to need a few more of these so let's close the preview toolpaths form and let's go back over to the two drawing tab and let's go back to the 2D view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the job dimensions to a larger sheet of material so we can fit quite a few more of these vector widgets on the sheet so let's just change the width to 96 inches and by 48 inches in height and let's keep the depth of the material the same and the XY data in the lower left and we're still going to work in inches and then let's just press OK on that so this is just warning us that because we've changed the material size we are going to need to recalculate all of our toolpaths so let's click OK on that and what we want to do is just drag a box around all the vectors so that they're all highlighted and we're going to go to the create a linear array of copies of the vectors we've got selected at the moment so with them all selected let's just click that icon there and what we're going to do is we're just going to specify that we want uh, 5 rows and 11 columns and we want to specify a gap in between each of the set of vectors of 1 inch in X and 1 inch in Y and all we need to do then is just press copy with them all still selected we just press F9 then to center them in the center of our work area once we've done that we can click close and we can then deselect all the vectors in our work area and then we can head straight back over to the toolpaths tab so let's go over to the toolpaths tab and because our toolpaths were set up in such a way that our vector selection is automatic so we've selected all the certain types of vectors so closed vectors on the layer recess rectangles it's now picked up all of the rectangles so all we need to do really is just recalculate all of the toolpaths and then the toolpaths will then be applied to all the vectors uh, relevant to the certain rules on each of the toolpaths which sounds simple so let's just recalculate all of those like so and now our three toolpaths we've got are now creating 55 different uh, vectric widgets on our sheet of material so let's just preview how those toolpaths are being run so reset preview I'm just going to do the rectangles again I'm just going to animate the preview and just slow down the toolpath a little bit so we can actually see how the toolpath is being machined so with the pocket rectangles highlighted just preview the selected toolpath and you can see there it went from bottom to top and then, we, then it would go ahead and we'd say run the drill holes and then we'd go ahead and then do the cutout as well now let's just close the preview let's just see how long roughly it reckons our toolpaths are going to take to run so with them all highlighted let's go into the summary toolpaths let's imagine we're going to be running this at 300 inches a minute and we're just going to have a scale factor of 1 so it reckons that our total machine time would be 1 hour and 55 minutes and 4 seconds to run those if they were run straight after each other and because each of these toolpaths all use the same quarter inch end mill we could actually save out 
all of these toolpaths in uh, a linear fashion so that they run one after the other and we could actually try and achieve that type of time on our machine. So we could just go to save toolpaths, I'll put all visible toolpaths to one file and it will just run them in the order that we've got in the toolpath list. So we've got the pocket rectangles, draw holes and then the cutout last. We could just simply select our post processor and then save out the toolpath and then run that on the machine. But what about if we wanted to go one step further and then try and optimize the way the toolpath is actually run. So we could run maybe part of the pocket toolpaths here, then maybe do the drill holes and then the cutout for this uh, part here and then we may move on to the nearest toolpath and follow that type of method to then try and make our toolpath run in a more efficient um, manner. So that's where the merging toolpath feature comes in. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of all of our toolpaths and I'm going to go over to the create merge toolpath icon and just have a look at the options that we've got available to us. So the first thing it's going to ask us for is some toolpaths to be visible for us to then merge together. And to merge toolpaths together, they need to be using all the same tool. So luckily, our three toolpaths all use the quarter inch end mill. So what I can do is I can just select this button here and it will check on the visibility on all the toolpaths for us, like so. And you'll see that those will now be listed in this section here, in the same way it does when we go to output all visible toolpaths to one file. And it's the next part where this gets interesting, where it gives us the option to choose the ordering of how we want the toolpath to run. So, in the ordering section, we've got an option to choose from left to right. We can do them in a grid fashion. We can do them from bottom to top. Or we can just let the software decide which is the shortest path out of all the different paths that it can take. And you can be very precise in this. So you could just select you want them to run from left to right or you can select them all on so that then the software will then choose this, the quickest route out of all the different ordering options and then create the merge toolpath with that. Now for this quick demonstration I'm just going to turn off the merge by part so what that means is that when you merge by part it will try to do all the toolpaths that are contained within the outermost toolpath. So the outermost toolpath in this case would be the profile cutout and then within that you've got the drill holes and then the pocket rectangles. So it would go and do this on a by part basis. But at the moment all I want to do is try and see if I can shave off some time from that one hour and 55 minutes. So I'm just going to allow the software to decide for me what is the quickest way to machine these toolpaths. So I'm just going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this Merge Toolpath Fastest root and then click merge toolpaths and it's just going to give us a warning that it's not going to preserve any of the current toolpathing orders and it's just going to go ahead and try and figure out the fastest way to toolpath all of these different parts. So if we're happy with that we just click OK and it will then go ahead and create our merge toolpath. So if I just go into the summary and I'll just turn off the merge toolpath we'll see at the moment the machine time is 1 hour and 55 minutes and 4 seconds. If I just turn all those off and just turn on the merge toolpath for the fastest route you can see that we've shaved off a few minutes there just by simply selecting those options. And we can even preview that just to show you the way that the software has decided that would be the quickest route to shave off some time with machining. So if I just close the summary and we just go to preview toolpath and just reset that preview and all we need to do is just slow that down a tad and then we can just go ahead and preview the selected toolpath. And as you can see it's doing part of each of the toolpaths and then it's going back round and then finishing them off. If we reset that preview and then just slow that down even more you'll see that it actually doesn't even complete the whole of the pocketing rectangles. It actually just does one of the parts of that toolpath and then it will move on to the next. So if we just preview that again you'll see that here we've only done part of the pocketing of the rectangles and then it comes back round and then finishes that off. And that is chosen by the software as the fastest route to actually machining all these parts. So if we were looking to speed up the machining time of our products and actually save money in the meantime, this would be the perfect method to accomplish this. Now imagine for this particular job once it has finished running, we have to manually cut out each of these parts and then finish them by hand to remove the tabs that we used to hold them in place. 
creating a merged toolpath in the fastest possible way, like we just did, may not be the best solution. We may actually want to create a merged toolpath which is done by part, so we could remove the parts that are finished before the toolpath has actually completed, giving us a great head start on that finishing stage. So to do this is simple. So let's close the preview toolpath form, and let's go back into the merged toolpaths, and let's just highlight our toolpaths again, and this time we're going to tick to allow to merge the toolpaths by part. And then if we want to, we can specify an ordering as well. Now if we have ease of access on our CNC machine, we may not be uh, particularly fussy around what order we want these to do, but most that have the gantry style type of CNC may actually need to have this specified to have from left to right, so that it would complete all these parts first, going along to the very far right, or we may need to do it from bottom to top, so it will do all these parts first, and then so that once the actual machine has finished doing these parts, we can just take those away while it's working on the next lot. Now if we do choose to do this, we need to obviously be particularly aware that we are going to be working uh, with a live machine, and it is not recommended to be touching any part of the machine while it's actually operating. So if you do intend to do this, you obviously need to be aware of the risks. So let's just demonstrate the left to right ordering of the by part option. So let's just do merge toolpath and left to right and then click to merge the toolpath and then let's just deselect them all and then let's just preview those. So and you'll see that we're doing it from left to right now in the quickest possible fashion so that if we were going to uh, take these off for finishing, then we could take these off while the machine is working down the other side of the material. And let's just close that, and then let's just create the last one uh, from bottom to top. So let's just select those toolpaths and come back into the Create Merge Toolpath option. And this time we're going to select Merge by Part and then do Bottom to Top. I'm just going to rename it to Bottom. To top and then merge those toolpaths as well. I'm just going to turn that one on and then preview that as well. And you'll see that this time we're going from bottom to top as well. So, again, we can apply the same method if we were going to be taking these off the machine. We could simply start finishing these. Uh, before the actual whole of the toolpath is actually completed, which would save us in the long run a lot of time. So what we may lose in overall machining time, so let's just for instance just turn on that merge by bottom to top, you'll see that we've actually put on an extra minute onto the toolpath if we were actually going to run these individually, but we're actually saving time because we would have had to manually finish each of these parts. So instead of having to wait an hour and 56 minutes to actually start taking off these parts for uh, hand finishing, we could actually do it once uh, the individual part has been machined away. And this just gives you a little insight into how we can actually use the Create Merge Toolpath in a way that may actually be beneficial to us in running our jobs. And you can use these options in any number of ways. So we could do the Merge By Part and we could also uh, select to do any of these uh, ordering routes. It will just select uh, the fastest out of any of the ones that we've got selected, or it will just abide by whichever option that you select. And with that, that brings us to the end of this tutorial, so thank you for watching.